Welcome to the Best of the Oprah Show. Today, we're looking back at a classic Oprah show featuring my buddy, tell it like it is, Dr. Phil. Now, sometimes recovering from a broken heart can, well, God, feels like getting run over on a railroad track. But for our viewers who just couldn't heal, Dr. Phil had to bring his no-nonsense approach and a big old dose of reality to help them move on with their lives. Nothing like a big old dose of Dr. Phil reality to help you through. And this is a show for anyone who has ever been dumped, been betrayed, cheated on, and left brokenhearted. If you find yourself hurt and still angry, thinking, how could this happen to me? Or why me? If you're unable to pick up the pieces after a devastating divorce or a bitter breakup, Dr. Phil is here. <laughs> Everybody's going, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Phil is here in the house to share his remedy on how to heal a broken heart. This is Cynthia and uh, her ex-boyfriend, uh, Darius. He broke up with her a year ago. She says it hit her like a heart attack. I started dating Darius. We dated for about a year. It was so easy to be with him and talk to him. It seemed right. He cares about his family. He was very supportive of me and listened to me. And he was my cheerleader. It just made me feel like I was real special. She was a you know, beautiful girl, very funny, intelligent. Just, she wasn't the one for me. We broke up about a year ago. And it just felt like somebody was taking my stomach and twisting it like a washcloth. And I still have a lot of feelings of anger and just low self-esteem and failure. I found out through mutual friends that he was dating someone else. I felt like, oh my God, the body's not even cold and this guy is bringing, bringing somebody else into, you know, into our world. We had been broken up for like two months. and I, I don't understand what I was supposed to do. Was I supposed to wear black? I guess I kind of hoped he was a little sad. I'm in a relationship right now. It's going extremely well. I know it's horrible, but I, I want his relationship to fail because then I'll know that it wasn't just me. My anger is debilitating. I'm just functioning. I can't concentrate, I can't move on. I can't move forward, I'm stuck. I'm analyzing this relationship to death. I can't believe she just hasn't gone on with her life. I still cry about this relationship. I think that something is seriously wrong with me if I can be so emotional about somebody that I haven't dated for over a year. Why can't I let go? Well, that's what Phil's here to help her answer today. Uh, and maybe many of you are watching around the country and the world who have that same predicament. Cynthia says she's even banned her friends and family from using Darius's name in her presence. They are both here. Darius, uh, we thank you for uh, being the only ex-boyfriend brave enough to come on TV <laughs> with Dr. Phil, because <laughs> other people were asked and didn't want to come, OK? Yeah. Go figure. Go figure. I'm going to tell you straight up, and we'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you straight up, you got to know this doesn't have a damn thing to do with him. He's been gone a year. Do you know that? I do. That's why I think something's wrong with me, because I logically know that this is ridiculous, and I don't want to go back out with him, but I still have so much anger, and I still... I'm terrified to get in a relationship with anybody new because I don't trust it. I'm afraid that if he could do this to me, then... So you got your heart broken, so you're playing the game with sweaty palms. It's like I'm just too nervous to go do this again. Mm -hmm. Well, Cynthia, I heard you had some questions that you needed to ask him for closure. Correct? Right. Okay. And understand is... that I want you to ask the questions, but I don't think she wants to ask these questions at all. But I think to go... Ask him. Ask him. <laughs> I just want to know if you cared about me so much. How was it so easy for you to get in this new relationship right away? Cynthia, our relationship was basically 
three months we were together, and then six months, it was a long distance relationship. And it was growing apart for about three of those months. It was just starting to pull apart. We were fighting all the time, and it was basically over. You and I basically had broken up before then. We just hadn't said the words. Mm -hmm. So when it was finally said, it was a very tough time for both of us. It, it hit us very hard. We were both on the phone crying. It was just very tough for us both. But when it was over, I mean, it had been over for three months. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to be my friend so bad, but I don't know why. And what makes you think that you deserve my good qualities when you couldn't handle the bad ones as well? I don't see why you get to have the fun, Cynthia, and the positive, humorous, yay person, but you couldn't handle the other parts of me. I wanted you to be my friend. I wanted us to be both positive about each other. Our relationship didn't work. I mean, it's completely different from, a relationship is completely different from friends. Okay, we're, we're just being friends. We're, we're, I wanna sit down and talk to you about your life and see how you're doing, see how things are going. Right now, we're just walking up saying, how you doing, good? Oh, that, that's great. See you later. All right, now, and, uh, do, you, do you feel one bit better after hearing those responses? No. Okay. Which is, is, which is, why, which is why I said there isn't any point in you asking these questions, because... But everybody feels like, I mean, this is every girlfriend's dream to be able to say, why did you do that to me? Really, what you want to say is, why didn't you love me? the way I wanted you to. Right. Really. But, but and here, there is no answer for that, is it, Phil? There is no answer, and it's not a question. 80% of all questions are statements in disguise. They're, they're not really questions. This is argument bait. When you say, why did you, if you loved me so much, why did you get with somebody else so quickly? Now, that's, you're posing that as a question. What's the real statement that's behind that? What are you really saying? What's so much better about your girlfriend than me. That's still a question. What's the statement? Why am I not good enough? Or I'm not good enough for him. Well, what is it you're saying to him, though? You want me to tell you what you're saying to him? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, I'm serious. <laughs> what she's really saying to you is, you no good lying rat bastard. <laughs> up with somebody before you ever gave me the news, and I don't like it, and I resent it, and I'm not going to get over it until you're man enough to admit it. Yeah. Isn't that what you're saying? Yeah. Now, yeah. I mean, that's what you're saying, isn't it? You're yeah. not saying, why did you not love me enough? You're saying you lied, and I know it, and admit it. Now, I don't think you did, actually, to tell you the truth. I don't think you lied a bit. But the truth is, that's how you feel about it, and that's the statement you're making, but you're not saying it. Can I go to commercial? I think you should. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> We heard from so many of you who can't get over a broken heart and are walking around feeling scorned over an ended relationship. Cynthia here has been holding on to her pain for a year after breaking up with Darius, and Dr. Phil says that she's handling it all wrong. Exactly. It, my, my whole point is, when you're saying, I want to ask you why this, why that, why the other, those aren't questions, they're statements. And basically what you're saying is, I refuse to accept this. I lost and I refuse to accept that, and so I'm just gonna throw an adult tantrum. I'm gonna pout for a year. <laughs> and, and my question is, how's that working for you? It's not. <laughs> I mean, the boy's here, but he doesn't look like he's, he's coming back, and you're saying I don't want him back. What are you getting out of pouting for a year? I'm not. I know I'm not supposed to. But it's doing something for you, or you wouldn't be doing it. You wouldn't be pouting and angry for a year if you weren't getting a payoff from it some way. And what is it? I guess um, being angry helps me feel stronger. It makes me feel like 
like I'm not completely the failure that I feel like I am in this. Well, that is what most people think, and it is so absolutely drop dead wrong. When you are angry, that is the time that you are most the victim, because you are what? What are you? You're, you're rebelling against being done wrong. But I have another theory about what your payoff for it is. Your payoff, as long as you're angry, pissed off, and shut down then you have a reason to not get back in the game and take the risk of caring again. Mm -hmm. And that's safer for you, right? Absolutely. It's safer. As long as I sit over here, they can't hurt me because I'm like a porcupine. You can't hug a porcupine, but you can't hurt a porcupine either. <laughs> so it's got good and bad with it, but you're just playing it safe. You're just saying, as long as I'm mad, they can't hurt me. And so you're, si you're giving yourself permission to sit on the sidelines. What about Darius? What about him? <laughs> I mean, really, you guys were in a relationship. You negotiated between you to end it, did you not? You just don't like the fact that he moved on and you didn't. Isn't that the bottom line? Yeah. Yeah. It hurts. <laughs> and you know, did, he, did he really do anything he shouldn't do, or did he just move on with his life? Did you want him to, like, languish for a year and, and then come out of it? No, I just didn't think it would be so easy for him if she he really wanted cared. To, she wanted him to feel pain. Yes. She wanted him to feel, <laughs> did you not? You wanted him to feel pain. You wanted him to feel really bad. I think she might have liked him languishing for a year. Well, yeah. and, and let me ask you, Darius, in all honesty, was this a painful breakup for you? Yes, very painful. Was it hurtful for you to lose the companionship of, of this woman? Yes. So that did affect you? Yeah, it did affect me. In what way? It, it killed me that she wasn't the one for me. You wanted her to be? You had hoped when you started yeah, obviously, off with her that when, she might be the one? When I started it off, yeah, I was hoping she would be the one. Um, she had, has all the qualities, you know, it's just, it, there was something that wasn't right. All right. And so this was painful for you? It was. To exit. You didn't just go, eh, whatever, get another one? No. I, I didn't do that at all. I, okay, and that's what you thought, right? It's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, whatever, so I'll get me a new one. What does it mean to you to hear him say, this was painful for me? He took it more seriously than just having a relationship with me and then, oh, well, that didn't work, and now I have great self-esteem, so I'm going to go out and snag the next one mm -hmm. and kick me down to the curb. I just feel like he wasn't honest about a lot of things, and, and that's what even makes me not want to be his friend now. Okay, and that's not a requisite. You don't have to be his friend now, but you do have to be your friend. Mm -hmm. And you're in charge of managing your life, and you've managed yourself into a lonely corner. And at some point, you got to say, you know what? I deserve better than that, and I'm not going to lead with my chin. I'm not going to lead with my heart, but I am going to give myself a chance to get back in the game. Because this isn't getting you anywhere. No, I'm afraid. I mean, I'm afraid to, to trust anyone because... I used to date bad boys, and Darius is kind of a dork, and, and <laughs> I'm sorry, but I like that about him. He's, he's sweet, and he's, I still got hurt, so I know I'm not doing something right, and I just don't know what's wrong. Yeah. Sorry. All right, well, so, but... <laughs> I'm now a dorky rat bastard to my parents. <laughs> right. but, but the whole point you have to understand is this is your internal dialogue. Mm -hmm. It's what you're saying to yourself. He hasn't hurt you. The world hasn't hurt you. It's what you're saying to yourself. And you're saying, since he didn't want me, I must not be okay. You've got to be willing to say, I'm going to get out there and take it a step at a time and see where you can go. And it's a matter of giving yourself permission to get back in the game. Okay. If you're a married woman, thank you for coming, Darius. Okay, if you're a married woman, good. This next story is probably your biggest fear. Like many of you, Christy was the supportive wife who thought she had the ideal husband until an unexpected phone call revealed a secret that shattered her world. Look at this story, honey, please. I got married when I was 21. He was my high school sweetheart, and I was madly in love, and I couldn't wait to marry him. He joined the military, 
and we moved every three to four years and each time we moved I found a new job. We had three beautiful children during those years. I thought we were building a great life together. My nightmare begins a year ago, January. We were at a dinner with a group of people I work with. During the dinner, my husband received a call on his cell phone. He decided to take the call outside the restaurant, and when he came back, his face was white, and he was stiff. And I turned to him and said, well, what's going on? And he looked at me and he said, um, I've had an affair. And that was um, her husband on the phone. He had found my husband's love letters to her. I couldn't believe it. It, it just couldn't be true. It's not the man I know. It's not the man I love. That's not the man I trusted all these years. He said he was so sorry. I forgave him. I put this out of my mind. I wanted to forget it like it never happened. And um, I just wanted what we had back. Months later, he grew distant. He said that he doesn't love me and questions if he ever loved me. Then last fall, he left. It's very difficult. I don't know what my next step should be. I was there for him all this time and loved him and supported him. And I thought we'd always be there together. How can he give all this up and walk out? I want Dr. Phil to tell me why. I can't accept this marriage is over. We'll talk to Christy when we come back. We'll be right back. Well, this is Christy. We just heard her story about her husband having an affair. Um, she forgave him the affair, and then he left her. And now she's having a hard time letting go and moving on. So what do you say to yourself about this? I mean, you say, I, I just, this hurts me. I have trouble letting go. What do you say to yourself about it? I think our lives got very hectic. We, you know, with the kids' schedule and me working full time and his job, I think everything got very hectic, very busy. Our lives were really busy and hectic, and the fun wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And he found somebody that was fun and exciting, and, and that excitement wasn't in our lives at this point. And I think we got so busy in our children's lives and our careers that um, we, we weren't fighting for that excitement or doing those fun things. Well, you're not excusing what he did, are you? Uh, I don't, mm, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It sounds to me that you're not only excusing his behavior, but that you're blaming yourself for setting the deal up that way. In some ways, yeah, I think I am. Yeah, so you think you're to blame for the choices he made. Because he had a lot, let, let's assume what you're saying is true. Let's, let's assume you guys weren't managing your relationship very well. Let's assume you managed it off into a ditch by being too involved with kids and careers and all that kind of stuff. He had a lot of choices to make, didn't he? Right. He could have come to you and said, hey, um, we're not doing very well here. Let's do better. You know, let me lead us through this. Let me give to you. Let me give us a wake up call. He could have done a lot of things, but he didn't. What he did instead was go off and play house with somebody else, right? Right. And you have ownership in that house? Um, I think I, I blame myself for not seeing some of the signs. Mm -hmm. That it was such a shock. I, I, can't, I can't understand why I didn't see some of this before. Who made the choice to have an affair? He did. Who made the choice to let it intrude on and wreck your relationship? He did. Who made the choice to bail out instead of work to rehabilitate the relationship? 
He did. Who put the distance between you and him now so that you don't even have a chance of working on it? He did. So how do you feel about that? Angry. I'm angry at that. Maybe that's better than blaming yourself. Right now, you're sitting there blaming yourself, saying, I fail, I fail to see it, I fail to change it, I fail to do it, I let it run off in the ditch, and now I'm blaming myself. Hell, he's the boy who made the bad decision. Mm -hmm. What happened to you isn't fair, but it happened. And you can spend, you, you're doing this wrong. You're spending 90% of your time focusing on the fact that it's not fair. You need to spend 5% of your time focusing on whether this is fair or not, and 95% of your time focusing on what you're going to do about it. Because fair or unfair, it is what it is. I don't think people can ever get by being hurt until they know they have been heard. Until you know that he knows what it is he did to you and, and what difference it made to you. And I don't think you've ever given yourself permission to express that. Have you? You wanted to sweep it under the rug. You want to pretend it wasn't there. It was there. He jerked you around, girl. He treated you real bad. Yeah. Yeah. OK? And to say, well, I mean, it's what, this like the Scarlett O'Hara School of Management. I'll think about that another day. <laughs> You need to think about that today or you will never get over it. What did he do to you? Have you ever told him what this did to you? Well, I think he knows. Yeah. I think he knows. <laughs> you tell me right now what this did to you. It, it hurt me um, emotionally. It's painful. The, uh, the lying, you know, that hurt the most. He was my best friend. We had a, you know, we were friends. He, he ruined my hopes and our future, our dreams, everything that I thought we had planned for the future with our children. He, he ruined all of those. Did you deserve that treatment? No. Weren't you with him during really tough times in his life? Yeah. Didn't you help him and support him and lift him up and love him when he wasn't very lovable? Yes. And, and you quit being fun and he bails and that's okay? No. No. It's then not say okay. it's not okay. Say, I didn't deserve this. You hurt me and I didn't deserve this. Give yourself permission to say it right now. Don't think about it. Just start talking. <laughs> No, no, start talking right now. Say, I did not deserve this. I did not deserve this. Go on, keep talking. <laughs> keep talking, go on, I really. Person, I, I didn't deserve this. I, I, I've helped you in your career. I was there for you all these years. I didn't deserve this. I want you to practice saying and doing that until you believe it. Yeah. Because until you believe it, you're not ever going to get past this. Right. And you're saying it. You're saying, oh, I deserve it. I'm a good person. Yeah, well, let me so tell you, what, you don't there's a big it. emotional disconnect there. Why? The disconnect is you have not yet given yourself permission to own your own feelings. At this point, you're saying, I'm not sure I have the right to be offended. I'm not sure I have the right to feel betrayed. I'm not sure I have the right to claim my spot in this world. And until you give yourself that right, you're going to stay stuck. I also feel another problem, too, is I have three children, and I do not want to, in any way, for their sake, show their dad in a bad light to them. Hey, listen, it's not about going home and lining up the kids and telling them how no good dad is. This is about you getting straight with you about the fact that you deserved better than this. And if you aren't willing to claim that for yourself, you'll never get it from the world. And if you're worried about those kids, worry about what you're showing them now as you go into an emotionally fetal position and withdraw from the world. That's a man who says his heart's in a million pieces since his girlfriend said goodbye. He's still calling weekly and pining away over her picture, but she says it's over. Dr. Phil on what to do when your ex won't let go. We'll be right back.
this is a problem that hits men and women equally hard, the sharp, lingering pain of a broken heart. Chris blames himself for the breakup of his relationship with his ex-girlfriend, Melanie. He says his love for her is undying, but she says it's over. Dear Dr. Phil, my girlfriend Melanie and I dated for three years. I was living with her until this past January when one day I came home from work and all my stuff was packed up. She told me to move out. I know I wasn't the most perfect boyfriend. She says that we were in different places in our lives, but I think it's because I was ignorant toward her feelings and her emotions. She is intelligent, beautiful, and caring, and she has never let me down. I'm afraid I lost all of this. I still have her pictures up in my truck and call her often. I love Melanie with all my heart and would do anything to resolve our issues. I have faults, but my love for Melanie is undying and true. My heart is broken and I feel empty without her, but she doesn't want to get back together with me. What should I do? Sincerely, Chris. Chris is here with his ex-girlfriend, Melanie, who says she has to be mean now to make Chris understand that it's really over. So, Chris, tell me how in your mind you justify hanging on to this and investing more effort and energy into it? We still talk a lot. Um, I notice when I'm around her, if I get, seem to get close to her, she gets real nervous. Um, her emotions start to come back through. So you think maybe she really secretly wants to be back with you? I think she's still in love with me. Um, but I don't know if she wants to be back with me. Now, when you came home and you found all your stuff packed, was that kind of a clue? <laughs> I mean, did that, did that kind of point you in the no direction? That's when I figured out we had some problems. OK. <laughs> all right, and then since then, you think you're getting mixed signals from her about her emotions? Since then, I've looked at myself and uh, reevaluated everything and, and looked deeper into myself, trying to figure out what's going on with me that caused her to leave me. Has she told you, you're reading me wrong, I'm not still in love with you, you need to leave me alone? No. OK, Melanie, here, here you are now. Are you giving mixed messages, or are you not? We were together for three years, and three years is a hey, long time. Hang on just a minute. Yeah. Hang on just a minute. Answer my question. Are you giving mixed messages, or are you not? No, I told him that we're not, we're not dating. We're, I'm trying to be friends, but I don't feel like we can even do that. I feel like each time I talk to him, if I'm, if I'm extra nice or if, I'm, if I just talk to him like a friend or anything, that he reads too much into it. And so, so if you try to be civil, mm -hmm. he reads too much into it. Right. OK, well, are you still in love with him? No. I love him, but I'm not in love with him. You, you love him as a person? As a person. As a fellow human being? As a fellow human being. Do you want any relationship with him? I wouldn't. I'd like for him to be able to talk to him and say, how's it doing? How's it going every once in a while? But I don't want to be in a relationship with him. No. So at this point, zero romantic interest in him. Zero interest in moving forward. You're not shielding yourself so it won't bubble through. You're not saying, I don't want to love him, but I really do. OK? Do you hear that? Yes. Do you believe that? <clears throat> when we broke up, there's a lot of things that she told me, issues that I had to deal with in order for us to be together. And I've dealt with them. I've done what needed to be done. And the problems that aren't completely solved are well on their way to being solved. So you think she gave you a formula for success, do A, B, C, and D, and then I would feel differently? She said she still didn't know that if she would feel differently. She doesn't know what the future would hold. Mm -hmm. But you thought that if you did A, B, C, and D, then you would stand a chance with her. The door wasn't closed. The door wasn't closed. Gotcha. Is this over, or is it not? It's over. I'd asked him to do A, B, C, and D a year ago or more. And so if he'd done it then, maybe it wouldn't have been over. But it was too late. By January, it was too late. So you don't intend in any way to mislead him? No, I don't. You, you, he would be wasting his time if, if he was trying to figure a way to get back involved with you. Because you're out and you're staying out. True oh, or false? True. Okay. 
Tell me if you accept that or not. I can live with that. I mean, I've done everything I can do now. Are the things she asked you to do or wanted you to do, were those good things for oh, yourself? Yeah, they were constructive toward me. Okay. So, no, so the net for you is, even though it didn't lead to what you wanted it to, you feel like you're a better person for having done it? Yes. It's not all bad deal. So it's like, it's like Darius and... <laughs> oh, yeah, OK. Next, she broke up with him. Now she wants him back. She's calling, emailing, sleeping with his picture on a pillar, driving by his house. Dr. Phil has something to say about that when we come back. You've probably been there at least once, breaking up and then trying to mend your broken heart. It is hard. Kim says her prayers were answered when she met her ex-boyfriend, but she says she made a big mistake when she broke up with him. Now she'll do anything, anything, Thing to get him back. I'm Kim Miller and I'm 30 years old and I finally met a man who is everything that I want. He is in fact everything that I've prayed for. He's handsome, he has great morals and values. We've been dating for about five months but I freaked out and broke things off because I really didn't believe that I deserved to have someone like him in my life. I try to call him the next day and say that, you know, I changed my mind. But he said that I scared him and that I required too much attention. I really want him back, but I don't know if that's possible. That's really all I want. I continue to call him and do whatever I can to keep him in my life. I email him two to three times a week and he'll maybe respond once. I model and every time I go on a booking, I cry because I'm sad. I don't have, you know, anyone to share that with. I have trouble eating and sleeping, and I listen to sad songs. I sleep with his picture next to my pillow. I have his picture in front of me at work. I have even driven by his place just to feel close to him somehow. I don't want to go on any other dates. I only want to be with him. And all this makes me contemplate, you know, whether life is worth living. Can you help me heal this broken heart? And can you help this fool for love girl in Texas? Well, we check with your ex, Kim, and he says he's moved on. He says he has no romantic feelings for you. Personally, I just think it's really demeaning to grovel and beg and, you know, chase after someone. And I'm wondering if there's a point at which your personal dignity is at stake in, in pursuing something, pursuing someone. Well, yeah, but he, I mean, he still left the door open. You know, we still went out to dinner and we still did stuff together. So I thought, you know, maybe, there's a possibility because he said, you know, let's just be friends and see what happens. Until I, ca I called him to tell him about the Oprah show. He's never said, Kim, <laughs> you know, I've moved on. He's never said it until <clears throat> last week, you know, until all of this. I mean, what, it's what over and people are emailing right now, guys, to find out what your name is, <laughs> where you live, and what is the modeling contract. <laughs> Do you believe now that it's over? Yeah, I believe that. Because, see, I, I think that it's important so you don't get in a situation where you look back later and you are humiliated, not by what he did, but what you, by what you, you did. did. Can you get your mind around the fact that he says, it just didn't work and I've moved on? Can you accept that? Or are you still, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but? It, it, it's not even so much as that, I just, had I have not broke up with him, I wonder, I'm like, well, where would we be? Because there was not a problem in the relationship until I freaked out, so. But you know, that, I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of thinking will make you insane. You know what happened? What could have happened did. What could have happened did. You, you say, what if? It's kind of like, what if we didn't go through that intersection? What if I didn't turn that corner? 
What if I didn't do this? That can make you crazy. You're saying, what if I hadn't broken up with him? And so you're mad at yourself for, for chickening out and getting him before he got you. And so now there you are. And you're well, saying, something else would have happened. You know why? Because the issue here, that you said it, is that you didn't think you were good enough for him. Mm. So at some point, that would have shown itself. Can you accept that good deal or bad, right or wrong, fair or unfair, deal's done, and, it, and it's over? No, well, I mean, I don't have a choice. Oh, you do have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you can paralyze yourself for, for a, year. a year. You yep. do have a choice, but there, there comes a point at which you say, when you get your mind around that, that's when you start the grief process instead of the grief destination. That's good. Th there's a point at which, once you get your mind around it, and, and it's like, that's why they say the first stage of grief is shock. Because once people say, I can't believe they're dead. I can't believe this happened. I can't believe that. And until you get your mind around that, you can never start working with it. But the first step is to say, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Once you get that in your mind, you say, OK, now, now I can what? start working with now it. Now what? Right. Yeah, exactly. Now what do I do? It's over. And you know what? All of a sudden, that old radar goes on full scan. And you see a guy over here looks pretty cute. You see a job over here that's pretty interesting. You see a project over here that you can start putting all of those emotions into that you were pouring down the hole of chasing somebody that didn't want you. Remember your spirit next. We have more advice for you today on healing a broken heart. Pam Houston is a writer who considers herself an expert at getting dumped. It's happened to her more than once. She says this time she learned her greatest lessons about life, love, and pulling herself together. I was engaged to be married in six months. I woke up one morning, kissed my fiance goodbye, went into town to pick up his favorite dinner. I came back and the house just seemed too quiet. My heart started to beat a little fast. And I ran downstairs, and his computer was gone, and ran up to the bedroom, and his clothes weren't in the closet. And then I saw a note with my name on it. It said, I thought I could be the one to make things different for you, but it turned out I was wrong. Please don't try to call or write. I really did love you. And that was the last I heard from him. I was devastated, as if it were a death. I felt completely abandoned, completely shocked, and I cried for the next 48 hours. This was the first time I'd ever been left with a note, but I have been left before. And I've learned over the years a little bit about how to take care of myself, even in the moments when that seems impossible. I think of it as Pam's eight steps to getting over heartache. The first thing I did was call my therapist little trick I've learned. <laughs> it's easy after a heartbreak to wallow. And there's a big difference between grieving and wallowing. And my challenge was to find the strength inside of me not to spend six months in my bathtub or wrapped in my down comforter, but to go out in the world and to take my grief out there with me. And to see the world through the lens of grief and to feel alive in it. The next step is what I call accepting grief's not altogether ironic consolation prize. And what I mean by that is the way the world comes into crystal clear focus when you're grieving. The way the warm air feels when I ride my big yellow bike down a hill, or the color the ocean turns right before sunset. My dog Dante was diagnosed with bone cancer last year. And it made me realize that no matter how much you love someone, and no matter how much they love you, there's always a chance that they might leave. So another step has been to learn that loss is built into love. It's a part of it. It's a thing that makes it even richer. So you just have to love every day. The most important step is to be grateful. At first, it was just for the little things. A day I made it through without crying, or a letter that I got from a friend. Then it turned into bigger things. I met a man who made me laugh. Now we're engaged to be married this summer. I'm as happy now as I was sad, happier even. And the thing I've learned is that the real gift is that I get to feel all of it, the pain, the joy, 
And I pray that as long as I'm breathing, I keep feeling all of it. I want to be awake every moment, taking it all in. Yeah, that was terrific. I want to say thanks to my friend Phil, Dr. Phil, to y'all. Just Phil to me. <laughs> thanks, Phil. All of this is in the Relationship Rescue book and the, and the workshop, uh, the workbook. Workbook. I workbook, because I've done the workbook. Very helpful. Yeah, she'd call me from bed at night. What does this mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phil. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>